Hi everyone, today we will go on Gaudi tour where we go along Gaudi's famous architecture around Barcelona, Spain. Barcelona has so many of Gaudi's works that it is often referred to as the city of Gaudi and his buildings are must-visit tour spots for Barcelona travelers. The first Gaudi building we will visit is Casa Mila, which means House of Milas. At the time of its completion in 1910, it was criticized for its inefficient use of space and unusual appearance. But its value has been further recognized for its use of space and its unique beauty ahead of the times. The next building is Casa Batia, the Batio family's house. This site was registered as a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 2005 and is about three minutes away on foot from Casa Mila. Casa Batillo is a C-shaped building with a unique bone structure. It's fun to compare Casa Batillo to Casa Mila since the two structures are very close to each other but vastly different design-wise. Although the style of architecture has changed depending on Gaudi's taste at the time, it's easy to spot Gaudi's architecture even at a glance because of its unique design characteristics. The next work is located in Plaza de Royal. Plaza de Royal is also a representative meeting place in the Old Town, which is located at the end of Lambla Street. The unique red street lamp in front of it is Gaudi's first work which won Barcelona's street lamp contest. There's a story behind this street lamp, which is that the city of Barcelona has damaged Gaudi's pride by offering about one-seventh of Gaudi's estimated pricing at the time. After that, there were several more conflicts between the city and Gaudi over repairing street lights. This incident made Gaudi swear to never work on a public design ever again. This is Sagrada Familia. It was the one that Gaudi poured his energy into until just before his death. This cathedral is one of the last of Gaudi's works and also one of the greatest masterpieces of modern architecture. It's perhaps the most visited tourist spot in Barcelona. Visitors are often surprised by the style of architecture that was never before seen anywhere else in Europe. This cathedral, which has no fixed form or stereotype, started construction when Gaudi was 31 years of age and he spent over 43 years on structuring it until he died. Sagrada Familia is still under construction and is planned for completion in 2026, the 100th anniversary of Gaudi's death. Even though the building is not completed yet, the sight of countless people flocking every day with unrivaled beauty seems to show the greatness of Gaudi. Currently, the construction cost of the cathedral is covered only by donations and ticket prices. The three sides of the cathedral consist of statues on the themes of birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. However, only the birth part of the three sides was completed by Gaudi's hands, so it is also interesting to compare it with the other two sides. Because the cathedral is very large, you will get a better photo of the cathedral from the park in front of it rather than at the actual entrance. Let's now take a look at the inside of the cathedral. The inside of the cathedral is also beautiful beyond words. When you enter, you can see the most unusually high stretched columns. When you stand among the tall pillars, it almost feels like you are in a forest. Walking around the cathedral feels like walking in a dense forest full of tall trees. This was intentional because Gaudi often found his muse and inspiration through nature. The inside of the cathedral is all white, so it feels pure and clean. But the natural light that seeps through the colorful stained glass adds a tint of mystery and awe. In particular, the stained glass windows display blue, green, and red colors, and when you stand in the middle of the cathedral and experience the changes of light, it will feel like the four seasons passing over you. 
Sagrada Familia is magnificent but cozy at the same time while having both modern and ancient styles of architecture. You can truly feel the genius of Gaudi here. Lastly, let's go to Park Gel, the fairy tale land of Barcelona. Not too far from the city center, you can find Gaudi's fairy tale inspirations through his adoption of the cookie house from the famous fairy tale Hansel and Gretel. There is a grand staircase in the center of the park. This is apparently where Gaudi poured his heart and soul the most. The crowd favorite at Park Gel is the seven-colored tile-clad lizard fountain. People are always lined up to take a photo with this lizard. The fountain of the lizard is designed to flow water naturally by sourcing water from the reservoir. The garden in Park Gel is unique with its curved ceilings, colorful tiles, and wavy sculptures. Here, you can see that Gaudi was once again inspired by nature. The ceiling has circular mosaic decorations symbolizing the Mediterranean sun, and the convex ceiling looks like clouds. The rows of columns also resemble rain. In fact, when it rains here, rainwater flows into the reservoir through the pipes in the columns. This is a walkway called the Wave Tunnel, made of stones around the park. The name is given because sloping walls and columns are connected to form waves. As you can see, all Gaudi's works were designed with intention and he was often inspired by his love of nature. Apparently, the site which the park was built on had lots of stones and steep slopes, so the construction was laborious and difficult. However, Gaudi designed Park Gel to blend it in with the natural ground without making the land even, to make it look and feel as natural as possible and not man-made. At the top of the park, the curved bench that surrounds the entire square is the longest bench in the world. Gaudi also used a curve that blends well with nature when making this bench. What's amazing is that Gaudi even considered the location of your spine when sitting here, so despite all the curves, you can sit on the bench comfortably. There are also holes built in all over the bench through which rainwater flows into the reservoir. Gaudi believed that straight lines represented man-made lines and that curves were God's creation. Because there are no straight lines in nature, Gaudi only used curves in his designs as a tribute to God's work. Visiting Park Gel in person, it's clear that Gaudi was a person of great talent, way ahead of his time, with genius ideas and unique inspirations. This concludes our tour of Gaudi, the artist who loved Barcelona and the beauty of nature.